Our next speaker is Mike Wolf. I am here. It's great, great to see you guys. Okay. Thanks for having me. I'm glad I got the time zone right. It's so complicated with you being in Australia. And, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. We made it work. <laughs> I did the math and I got it right. This I don't know how David managed to manifest this, bringing speakers in from different countries and time zones. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a not challenge. easy. No. It's an undertaking, yeah. It's an undertaking. And uh, luckily, I, I, I had to reconfirm the math a few times to make sure, but we got it. So I'm very, uh, very happy to be here. Here, you're on time. I just want to say how much I appreciate you putting on this uh, summit. It's so, one, it's timely and, and it's very necessary. And uh, just want to congratulate you because I know it's a lot of work uh, to try to put something like this together and get all the speakers lined up time-wise. And so congratulations on, on making it happen, first of all. Thank you. I did have a lot of help from our editors. Mike Wolf is a, a self-made freedom lifestyle entrepreneur, seasoned investor, um, international speaker, um, you know, that doesn't, that's only saying the small amount of what you do. You have Mike Wolf uh, mastery. I think one of the most important things I would say that we've heard from you in the past is about the currency of happiness, which we haven't even spoken on. So many speakers coming on and, and talking about their, we've talked about grief here. We've been talking about sadness and loss and fear. And, and some people have talked about joy and we've had the anger and we've had justice and, and all of these feelings it's all come out on the teleconference what universal soul love is we're here to to lay it all out we're not excluding anything we're not ignoring anything we're not ignoring the, the conflicts we're not saying don't act we're saying more or less don't react i think mm. wow. and, and so now but for us you um I guess, symbolize abundance, uh, abundance, which mm. is not just financial, but abundance, which is an emotional abundance mm. of happiness. And um, your your energy is infectious. We love you. Uh, you, you have I a think, very- I love you guys too. And I'm so glad to see you. And it was nice to hear from you. And uh, I think happiness is so important, abundance. Uh, I actually did, I got asked to do a TED talk in Las Vegas in January. And a lot of people are, for those of you who don't know me, most of the time I get asked to speak about real estate investing and uh, entrepreneurship and business, because that's what I've been doing most of my life. Uh, but as you, you kind of hit the nail on the head, you know, when I was younger, uh, my currency was money. I was definitely chasing money like everybody else. And money is important. I don't ever want anybody to think, oh, I don't need money. As long as I can, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to be happy if you don't have uh, the necessities of life, if you don't have food, if you don't have shelter, if you don't have uh, if you don't have your money on autopilot or at least uh, enough that you can survive, it's pretty hard to be happy and fulfilled and have all those other things. And so it is important. However, over time, I learned that instead of chasing money, I, I wish we had instead of just bank accounts that measure our money, I wish we had this happiness account. And we had a, full, uh, a fulfillment account that measured, you know, waking up excited every day, waking up with amazing energy and just wanting to change a planet and share your happiness, your fulfillment, and make everybody feel that way. Because I don't, I don't think it, this topic is obviously uh, peace, and I don't think there would be people fighting with each other if everything there was an abundance of happiness and everybody uh, was fulfilled. And so, to me, one of the things I loved about that Costa Rica trip, for example, is it was a, all of us got to speak on different topics, and uh, some of it was making more money, and some of it was having a more successful business and having more clients. But then beyond that. If you look at the relationships that we built, if you look at, at the time we spent at the orphanage, a lot of people, uh, we all went down with different intentions. We all went down wanting to get something different from that event, but we all came back. Like when we, we spent, uh, for those of you who, uh, I'm not sure if you spoke about that uh, that trip at all, but uh, oh, we, we actually went, oh, go ahead. Yeah, we, we touched on it a little bit. Oh, good. So yeah, so we all went down there. We were all, most of us entrepreneurs, we all went down there and we, we had a lot of fun. We were zip lining and hiking through the rainforest, but we also went and gave back and we hung out with the kids at the, uh, at the orphanage and we brought them gifts. And to me, that stuff is the stuff that lights you up and you know, making a difference. Most of these kids, their, their parents were going through the legal system to see if the parents were uh, fit to be parents. A lot of them were having either drug issues or they committed a crime or drug issues, whatever it was. And these kids were very, very young, didn't do anything wrong. And yet they had to live in an orphanage while they're to see if their parents were, were fit. And 
when I look back to that trip, that's the thing I remember the most is playing with those kids and having water balloon fights. And uh, that's not why I went there. I didn't go on that trip with that intention. That was that was part of it. But but I think a lot of times we forget about the things that really do light us up. And it's not, I think if we're on our deathbed uh, and looking back on things, I don't think we'd, we'd say, oh, I'm so glad I had all that money or I had this type of car or I had this big a house or the yacht. I think it's, a, it's a, the differences that we made on this planet, uh, the way we gave back and helped other people, how we treated other people. And to me, that's, uh, you can't put a price on that. And, and it's so forgotten because we're, we're so busy uh, you know, chasing the money and chasing the material things that we forget about what's really important. Well, that's right. For me, it was what I remember and what I'm still reliving is, you know, hanging out with you and we were, you know, there was a lot of singing going on with you. You kept that energy going and, and the talks I had with everyone and, and uh, that's what was important to me. And I'm still bringing that back. You know, we, we've had um, Brad Axelrad on in the past. It's, it's obviously, this is a I, look, if I had, if I could invite everybody on a teleconference, I'd be here for weeks interviewing exactly. people. Right. But well, it's, all, it's all about those relationships, right? It's all about the relationships you built and, and the friendships and, and those things, uh, you know, we'll be friends forever. And one of these days I'm hoping to actually make it to your side of the world if we can ever get these borders back open. But I think that's really what's important. I think that's the stuff, like, like I said, if there's an account where you can measure that, instead of just the bank accounts, it's, Something you can look at tells you how much money you have. But imagine if we could measure some of these other things that are even more important. But we don't. We don't focus on that. We don't really pay attention to it. And quite often, uh, it, you know, a lot of us go through life very unhappy and very miserable. And, not, and, and I know a lot of people that are very, very wealthy financially, but they're miserable. They go home to their big house and, and uh, they spend so much time chasing the money. They, don't, they haven't had any time to spend with their kids. They haven't mm -hmm. focused on their health. Everything else is falling apart around them, yet their bank account looks really impressive. And if we could actually measure all those other things and try to balance it, where it's okay, well, we got the money part's good, but we also, our, my family life is awesome. My health is doing well. And having that balance in life. And I think if everybody had the proper balance, I don't think we'd be fighting. I think we'd be more, more understanding and we'd be more caring and, and also knowing that other people, we're all, we're all on our own journey. We're all doing different things. We all have different life experiences. And we, I think we'd be more um, open to, to other people. Like right now, though, it seems like everybody's divided on like every single topic, doesn't matter what it is. And I think when, when you're happy and when you're fulfilled, then you just want to make everybody else happy. So if you see somebody else who maybe they're choosing a different path, maybe they have a different opinion. If they're happy and they're not hurting anybody, you're good with that. And if you see somebody who's not happy, you want to, you want to bring them up. You want to make them happy too. But once again, a lot of this stuff isn't focused on just everybody. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm not going to blame the media, but I think there's a lot of fear mongering going on. And uh, these days, just everybody, like I said, everybody's got a different opinion on like every single topic. And I think we need to be open, more open-minded and just understand everybody's going through a different experience right now. And there's never been a time where we need to be more together as opposed to more divided. Yeah, I mean, we can. I'm going to bring it back in. Sasha Stone was talking about this very thing and the unfairness in that, that the resources on this planet, as far as I can tell, haven't been distributed in an equitable manner. I mean, I think that's a fact. And that's, it's been def that's definitely a fact. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm, that I'm here and I'm happy and, and excited, when, when I was a starving university student, I, was I would have been just as happy and just as excited because... And, and I like what Joe said about gratitude. I think every day, instead of thinking about the things that you want, th think about the things that you're grateful for that, you, that, you know, there's people on uh, the other side of the planet that our bad day would be that, that they can't even imagine having that good a day as our bad day. And so I think it's just a matter of, you know, having gratitude for what you do have. And I find that the universe uh, will give you a lot more when you, when you actually are appreciative of the things that we've got. And when you're just thinking, oh, well, I'll be happy once I've got this. And once I've got this car, my life's gonna be great. And once I've got this house, I think that uh, you could be happy wherever you're at and you can have, see the abundance in what you do have. Doesn't mean you don't want more, that you, it's wrong to want more and strive to get more. But I think that uh, quite often people get upset at the things that they're lacking and they go into scarcity mode. And then they start seeing everybody else who's got more than they have 
uh, maybe it's financial or in whatever way they see somebody who's got more than they have and they actually begrudge that person because they happen to have more money or more success or whatever it is. And I think that instead, just be grateful for what you've got. Cause there was a point where I was looking at people on yachts and thinking, man, I'd love to be in that position one day. Uh, but instead of being mad at them and thinking, oh, well, he's got money and the, everything's unfair. And it's un no, you've got, you've got to be happy for what you've got and grateful. Still definitely have aspirations. There's, you can definitely want more, but don't be, uh, I guess, don't forget about how lucky. If you have, if you're right now able to watch uh, this program, if you have internet and uh, electricity, and I assume you're not starving to death, or you'd probably be chasing an animal for, for food right now instead of being here. We, we live in amazing times, and uh, a lot of the most fortunate people on the planet don't even know how fortunate they are. It's, it's true. There's so many different ways to, to tackle this. I mean, look, we do have, we've got, I don't know, what is it, like 40 to 60 million displaced people in the world that have absolutely nothing, mind you. And so, but there are probably billions more that lie somewhere in between. You're absolutely right on all of this. And then another point to make would be, we've in the past, we've talked about generosity. Um, so that we're, we're bringing in different, energies and thought process into this and not ignoring any of them. And There's generosity so many, is so many that... different ways of interpreting our reality. Yeah. Are we living in dreadful times or are we actually quite lucky, but uh, just that we've got a few challenges ahead. Yeah. And interpretation is everything, isn't it? And the interpretation of energy in it, which changes uh, your degree of happiness and, and peace mm. and, uh, and it's all true though. And, 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 you know, it's so, and, and it is perception. It's how you view things. And you can choose to say, Hey, the, the world's falling apart and the zombies are going to come out any minute now and just kind of <laughs> give up, check out on life thinking, Oh, well, what's the point? Or you yeah. can look at it and think, you know, despite there's always going to be challenges. We're never going to have that perfect planet where everybody's just getting along and everything's, you know, a hundred percent. But, uh, you know, I think there's, if we weren't human beings, almost every other animal probably benefited from uh, what's happened in the past year and a half. Like there were, there were less airplanes, less pollution, less cars on the road. And I'm not, I, I, I fly a lot, so I'm not in any way uh, criticizing any of this, but I'm just saying in some ways the planet, uh, maybe we needed a bit of a reset on certain things. Maybe we just take a little time to, I don't necessarily like the idea of being locked down, but just having that extra bandwidth to just kind of process things a little differently and just, Maybe see how lucky we had it before, so we could be more grateful when we get it back. And I think right. that is some of the, you know, some of the importance. And, and for me, uh, you know, I, I uh, much like everybody else, I actually went back to Canada where I'm from during COVID. Normally I'm a nomad. Normally, I, right now I'm in Mexico. Normally I'm a nomad. And at first I was really upset. I was not grateful that we were having a pandemic. And then I realized, man, this gave me a whole bunch of time to go and create stuff to go help other people and share my knowledge and stuff that I probably should have done a long time ago, but never would have done. And so there, there's a positive and a negative to everything. And it's how you perceive it. And mm. if you choose to see the world as uh, being a horrible place and negative, it's very easy to uh, just get in a really scarce, scarcity mindset. Uh, but you can also look at it. Hey, you no, know, I, I have this extra time. Maybe I could go learn some new stuff. I could maybe, I, I never liked my job before. Now it's time. Maybe I could retrain and come, come out of this uh, COVID uh, in a better spot than when I went into it. And so uh, I think there's a positive and negative to everything. And it's just really how you, how you choose to perceive it and what your mindset is around it. Yeah, no, that, that's right. It, it, life is a perspective. And I, I know there are people out there going, oh, I can hear it now. Oh, sure. But they're doing okay. You know, the doctor, the real estate entrepreneur, private investigator thinking, oh, well, they don't, they never had nothing. They don't know what it's like to go without. That's not true. I, I can tell you right now, I've had nothing. I've been there. Lana's had time. Hard times we have had this time where there was no food, literally. You know, I've gone through those periods when I was younger. Um, and I got to tell you, I know there are millions and millions and millions of people out there who may not have food. I know them personally and I've walked with them and talked with them in recent times. And there are times when you go without and you feel like giving up and, but you've got to hang in there because things change and you've got to be open to the possibility of change. 
and possibility of abundance, even when you have nothing in days when there are no food or money. Honestly, I can tell you, I've been there. I've and been we've, there too. Yeah, uh, I've been there too. You know, don't drop out. Don't give up. Um, just I, I, like. I personally <laughs> think sometimes you have to hit rock bottom before you can bounce back. And I've had some, um, like, for example, it was around eight years ago, I used to get uh, gout, which if you don't know what that is, it's a very uh, painful form of arthritis. And it actually put me in a wheelchair and I couldn't walk anymore. And when you're an entrepreneur and your brain is saying, I want to do this, 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 your body's saying, no, you can't do any of that. You're stuck here in this wheelchair. I had to have that happen to me. And then I, I changed my diet. I became vegan, as I think you know. I, I, all, the, all the years I suffered from that same thing before I hit the wheelchair, I had to hit rock, rock bottom before I made a change in my life. And I consider myself to be a, a fairly smart person where I should have been able to figure that out. And sometimes the universe gives you little signs and little signals that maybe you need to you know, focus instead of just on the money, maybe it's time to start focusing a little bit on your health. But I ignored it. And then I had to hit rock bottom. And I, I was very fortunate. When I went to the doctor, the doctor didn't say, oh, well, if you change your diet and give up meat, you'll be able to walk. The doctor said, if you give up meat, you might one day get out of this wheelchair. And so I feel extremely grateful I was, that I, I beat the odds and I was able to do it. But what I'm saying is no matter where you are, sometimes rock bottom is, is until you hit rock bottom, you're not going to make the necessary changes uh, that you need to bounce back and get to where you need to be. And so it's very easy to get depressed and stressed and, and think the world's a horrible uh, place. But I, I personally believe in uh, miracles. And I think sometimes you just need sometimes a really painful lesson uh, to go make the necessary changes to get to, on the path that you're supposed to be on. And so I've had many, that wasn't, that wasn't the only uh, bad experience, but I, I can always tell you that when, when the worst things happen to you, sometimes you don't know why is this happening to me and, you know, what did I do to deserve this? And quite often in hindsight, those are some of the best things that ever happened to you. Sometimes they are blessings in disguise and you don't know till much later why that happened. But I, I believe you always end up finding out down the road if you just, you know, you just uh, look at the lessons that the universe is trying to give you, make whatever those changes are that you need to make. And, but yeah, just, just like you, David, I, I, uh, I wasn't born uh, into money. I didn't, you know, none of the stuff that I've got uh, was given to me. And I've had a lot of expensive lessons along the way uh, to getting here. And so my biggest uh, piece of advice is even if you're, and I know a lot of people have lost their jobs and their businesses. I know it's very tough times for many, many people. Don't give up. Just, uh, just keep get, pulling yourself back up. Try to stay as positive as you can and uh, take this time. A lot of us in Canada, they're just coming out of lockdown. I don't know what it's like in Australia, but in Canada, they're just coming out of lockdown in some parts of Canada. And you don't use the time just to watch Netflix. Uh, use the time to go and maybe read some books and educate yourself and figure out what uh, you know the, the Mike 2.0 and the David and, and Lana 2.0 looks like. And what does post-COVID look like for you? Instead of just letting life happen to you, start making the necessary changes to, to pull yourself back up. And I know it's not that easy sometimes, and it's sometimes hard to keep that positive outlook. Uh, but if you do that, uh, sometimes you will look back and you'll, you'll think, man, that COVID, as bad as it was, and it lost my business, but now I'm on this way better path. And I, I truly believe that's going to happen for a lot of people. We're going to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very wise words. Practical. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And, and Mike, if people want to get in touch with you, what's um, a good website for them to go to? Yeah, they can go to Mike Wolf Mastery, M-I-K-E-W-O-L-F-M-A-S-T-E-R-Y.com, Mike Wolf Mastery.com. And uh, uh, I've got lots of, uh, lots of stuff on there. And you can also email me or you can email me at Mike at Mike Wolf Mastery. And if somebody's struggling and you're, you're having a really tough time in whatever way, I'm always happy uh, to help you any way I can. And uh, certainly if this need a pep talk, I'm happy to do it. That's great. Thank you so much. We're Thank actually, you. we're moving on to, uh, Michael, author, Michael Tellinger next, who's advocating a moneyless system. I don't I've often <laughs> wondered what that would be like bringing you two together, but there's, but there's actually <laughs> cool. a, um, commonalities, commonalities yeah. in, in reality, as there always is. Yeah. People think that there's some, that, that uh, anyway. Well, we'll we're going to M Michael Tellinger next, which was actually which pre recorded because mm -hmm. he's in South Africa. But oh, I'm gonna have to watch that. But yeah, I, I want to thank you so much for, for once again putting this on. And I think it's so necessary right now. And uh, I appreciate you thinking of me and having me here. Thank Thanks you so Mike. much, Mike.
Really Great to see you. Anytime. And I hope to see you guys in person very, very soon. Lovely. <laughs> One of these days, we'll get there. I hope so. That's right. Bye, Bye for now. Thanks again. <laughs>